Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. Today we're looking at uh, Huygens' principle. This is part of the VCA Uniform Physics topic. Uh, what are we doing? Light and matter. And um, yeah, it's, it's strictly not part of it. It's kind of useful background information. So we'll just explore it. It shouldn't take too long. So let's get stuck into it. So a useful thing for us to be able to do is represent waves. And they're not necessarily the easiest things to represent in a diagram to show information such as reflection, refraction, and diffraction. So we've come up with methods to do it. Um, so yeah, all, sort, all sorts of diagrams that we use, all sorts of waves can be represented using various diagrams. Most common thing is to use lines which represent a certain part of the wave. Generally we stick with the crest, the, the uppermost part of the wave and and uh, we draw lines for that. Then distance between these lines would actually be the wavelength, so crest to crest. So that, that's sort of one of the real basic places that we start. Um, basically, we're talking now uh, a few hundred years ago that uh, Huygens came up with this model to explain situations such as these. How do we actually predict where the next wave will be? So, you know, in a very basic thing where there's no interference or anything like that, it's pretty easy, but once we move into, say, refraction, where there's changes of angles and things like that, it gets a little bit harder. Um, so basically what Huygens' principle suggests is that uh, we use geometry to predict the position of the next wave front. We can do that if we know the previous one. And basically, effectively, what we're saying is every single point on a wave uh, or the wave front can be considered to be a source of a secondary wavelet, uh, a little circular wavelet. So as if it's a stone is dropped from a single point. And all of these wavelets then spread out at exactly the same speed. And as a result, uh, we can then draw a tangent in to find the new wave front. Um, we basically call this the envelope of the wavelets. So let's have a look then at how we'd apply that. Probably sounds like a whole lot of mumbo jumbo, but it'll make a bit more sense in a diagram. So let's find the next wave front. Basically, if we just consider multiple points as here as point sources, then we get all these, you know, from each point, it would send out a given wave. And we draw in the next tangent. There's our next wave front. And then we can repeat that process. We get our next wave front. So that's fairly straightforward with a straight wave. You know, it's obviously just going to produce parallel lines. So what happens then if in the case of a stone dropping in the water and we've got this wave front out, where is the wave front that was in front of that? Same principle, we draw in all these circular uh, little wavelets and then draw in a tangent. In this case that tangent will be a curve. All right. So how do we use this in terms of, say, reflection? So really, we've got all these wave fronts coming in, the little wavelets that have been drawn in there. And then some of those are hitting first and being reflected out, whilst the other ones are coming in to hit the surface before reflecting out. So it kind of gives us this part reflected waves and then ultimately these full reflected waves where the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Now similar, similarly for refraction, we have the incident wave coming in. As it starts to enter the new medium, it's gone to a more optically dense medium, it causes it to slow down. So it continues to slow down as it, each wavelet enters. And ultimately, the result is because the left-hand side was going slower than the right-hand side, effectively, uh, it's traveling further out here than it is in here, and it results in a change of direction. Okay, you're not really going to be examined on this, but I think it's just kind of a little bit of useful background information. All right, that's it.